Alrighty then. You sure? Anybody else? Anybody else? Can I grab this chair? Yeah, I have to just However we can work, let's, let's fit this in here. Okay, so we've kind of gone through this, everybody. What we're doing is just going over the overall strategy of how to turn your Facebook followers into sales. What kind of business are you guys in or thinking about getting in? Or uh, We do uh, bookkeeping. Bookkeeping. That was my first degree, my first degree. I was in accounting, so I took bookkeeping. A lot of accounting classes. Um, so we were going over the framework on how to create your Facebook page if you don't have one or optimize the Facebook page you already got to attract your target audience. Okay, so you want to make sure your profile picture is clear, sharp, uh, picture of your face and a representation of your brand. As you can see, if you look at my cover photo on a uh, Facebook, it has me in the background with my little funnel lab, and I, that's what I do. I do it all day. I got a funnel lab in my house where I build sales funnels and make money all day long. So um, you want to make sure your cover photo and your profile picture. I got the social media little ring light in the background. So make sure that your profiles match what you do so you can, again, attract your target audience. Um, and then your cover photo. Okay, now we're gonna go to an active work on kind of a workbook thing. Um, we're gonna create a lead magnet for each of your businesses. Um, it's really easy, sounds kind of techy, but it's not. The reason, and, and I just wanna let you guys know, the reason that we don't have a computer and aren't doing this presentation on the screen is because if you understand the foundational principles of marketing without a computer, you can take that and go to Facebook and do exactly what it says here. So um, creating a lead magnet, what a lead magnet is, is a value exchange for somebody's information, for uh, somebody's email address. People will all, you see them all the time, get the seven tip workbook, e PDF or whatever, then it takes you over to a page and asks for your email address. A lot of people put fake email addresses in there. So you wanna make sure that when you set up a lead funnel, which is, that's what that is when it collects the email address, that you make them submit an email address and let them know that the document will be sent to them because that, that way you can ensure that they give you a good email address. They want it. They clicked on it because they want it and if they give you a fake email address, they won't get it. So make sure you let them know that they're gonna get it in an email. And then just so you know, the process is when they click on the lead map that they submit their email address, an automation will start that will introduce them to who you are, what you do, how you do it, and how you can do it for them and how they can buy. It's a five sequence email. This email sequence warms them up so you're not talking to people that just came on your page that's a cold audience. It's hard to sell a cold audience anything. You have to warm them up, nurture them, let them know that you are there for them, that you're knowledgeable about what you do, and you do that with the content you create. And then they click on, they go over to your email address, they go into an email automation that uh, always leads them to a call to action, which is go to my website, go to this. Do so you're leading people who just get on your Facebook profile through a buying process without you being in it. And then when they get to the buying process, whether it's a realtor who needs a appointment set up to go look at a house, you will have screened out the the tire kickers, I call them. People are just, eh, I kind of want to see what's going on. But they're not really interested because you'll have survey questions. Maybe you'll ask them or they'll pick up a phone call. You'll have a call to action, pick up a phone call and let's talk or whatever. And that way you could screen and you're not just talking to everybody that comes on Facebook. Your, your I call it a Facebook a lead funnel, will screen out the people who are just you know tire kickers. And when your business starts really growing, you guys, you don't have time even to entertain them. Not that you don't want to help them, but your content is where you would help those people. If they can't take the time to go through your content and you're structuring your content to help them and they won't even do that, then they probably won't do anything further that costs money because they don't even want to do the stuff that's for free that I'm giving you. So. That's how you avoid the people that could waste your time, especially people who are in a real estate business. That's a lot of time and money 
that and then to have it just be blah, blah. you could do the credit score survey questions you know the kind of income bracket questions um for your business you're in the wedding industry you can see if there are people uh what kind of tell me what you do the event planning part of it or no we were um i've been on the stage at the bridal show for about 20 years mm -hmm. so i have fortunate to have, we're, we're fortunate now to have a large email list mm -hmm. um we stopped doing events when we got injured so we've been putting our Process. Yeah, and, and things like people think rhythm, no rhythm, key left key, it's like all that stuff is just propaganda from the dance industry to make people spend more money. At the right. Of the we all have rhythm. We all have like, it's simple, and we're trying to just get people. So you're that selling stuff. that kind of a course program, yeah. uh, opportunity to learn those society says you can't learn kind of thing? Right. So you would find your target audience, maybe in dance, uh, Facebook groups, dance groups. You would go to those groups, provide value in groups. Don't go in other people's groups just straight up trying to sell stuff, you'll get kicked out. What you do is you go in other groups to build relationships. It, it, uh, Facebook marketing, social media marketing, even though there's two big points, it's, 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 the, uh, it's about relationships you can't really sell outright without a process on Facebook and it'd be effective. Uh, Facebook is about building relationships and networking and you can make money on the side because of that. You just have to know how and you just can't be in people's groups just out there dropping links, buy my stuff, go to my website. They'll kick you out and sometimes those groups, when I first started in this game, I got kicked out of a really good group and banned for life because I didn't know that you're not supposed to drop links in people's groups. So I was like hardcore trying to learn everything and I was trying to do it quick. So I would learn something immediately, like before I even got off YouTube, I was doing it. So <laughs> got banned from a couple groups way back when, when I first started this day. So um, just be careful when you're doing that. But where would you find your target audience? The best places are going to be Facebook groups that are have your niche audience in there. That's where they're at. There are those people that own those Facebook groups have already congregated your audience. You don't have to go look for them, they're already there. Then you provide value-based content, your lead magnets, stuff that's not overtly selling. Go in those groups, ask, answer the questions, because uh, your niche audience are asking questions in those people's groups. They're engaged in those groups because they're getting value out of them. Find out what kind of value they're giving in those groups. What kind of stuff are they posting that's getting a lot of engagement in the comments? Copy what they post. Ask the same questions to your audience. Next thing you know, people will be clicking on your comments. Answer those people's questions in their groups. Provide value. Yeah, the organic method of generating leads is tedious, but you can learn so much just by being in a grunge work of doing it. Or you can pay me to do it either way, it don't matter. <laughs> but you know, I know how to do it, but this is about showing you guys how to do it. Um, and it can be done all, believe it or not, at no cost. I did it from my back seat. When I got that divorce, I did it from my back seat. And in two weeks, I was in my own apartment and it kind of grew from there. So I had nothing. I gave my last company up to him. And so, and then since I did it once, it wasn't nothing to do it again. But. You know, uh, I started this from nothing, Googling stuff, YouTube in it, university, I call it YouTube University, and learning what I need to know till I made enough money to pay somebody to teach me a little more than I needed, to, that, that I didn't know. And that's the process that I went through. And then I fine tuned my process, found out what worked, and then started offering it to other people, and it worked for them, and now, you know, and it doesn't taste, this was two years ago, I was sleeping in the backseat of my car with nothing, so. It's easy to do, it's just a tedious process. This is not an easy, like quick fix to make money. You're not gonna, you're not gonna make money overnight like this. Especially if you don't have an audience, because building an audience takes time. You can generate income, but it's not something you can count on for at least three months or so of consistently, every single day, posting something. Now, I got a good thing for you guys because posting does not mean that you got to get on the internet every single day. You can write up, 
30 days worth of posts and schedule into Facebook, they let you schedule out 90 days. If you can do 90 days, so that way all you got to do is go on your page and respond to the comments. Lure those people back towards your offer. If, if, if um, Who has a skincare, a pedicure, to put things? So um, let's say you give about seven tips to healthy feet or whatever. They click on it. They send your email address, but you put those seven tips also in your Facebook group. Uh, then you give a call to action. What are your best tips that you used for your care? Then you get comments down there. You know those people are your target audience. So you can start going into the likes and looking at who those people are and start moving them along your journey. Maybe your journey is to nurture them with your content, get them on your email list and send them the five email, the warm up sequence, who you are, what you do, how you do it, and how you can do it for them and get them to buy. But 70 to 80, girl, what's up? <laughs> You made it. Thank you. Come on in here, baby. Let me go kiss you. And there's some, some stuff. Oh, right there. Um, so, where were we? Sorry about that. Those leads, if they make comments, you can go into Yeah, okay. So, yeah. So, your comments is a gold mine. First of all, let me tell you when you're at your networking events, your workshops, whatever you're doing out here to promote your business, if you're not collecting email addresses, you're letting money go because... 70 to 80 to maybe even 90 percent of the people that see you even if they know you are not going to buy from you when they see you how do you follow up with them are you just going to let that money go that's what the email process at least reminds them hey nice meeting you or whatever it was and these are sequences at the minute their email address is in it triggers it, with the CRM, it will trigger the email process to go when they submit. So you don't have to go in every day, take those email addresses out, put them into the email provider. So not, you don't have to do that. It's all automated. And uh, the tactics that come with the, I said there was an interactive workbook, that these links are clickable. So that when you scan the code and submit your email address, because I verify what I do, when you submit your email address to make sure it's correct, you will get a link that will be able to allow you this workbook will be the exact same but the link will be clickable with the tactic so anything with a blue link is clickable so at the end is a is a code i mean it's the qr code scan it with your phone to get to it we're going to go over creating a lead magnet again what's a lead magnet for anybody anybody tell me what a lead magnet's for Yep. Value exchange for an email address. And people think that you got to give like a tangible product. It's a value exchange. Seven tips is value if these people don't know these tips to good foot care. And what it does is it targets the people that you can sell to. If somebody clicks on that link and puts in their email address, it's obvious that's a target audience that you can sell to, you don't want to just let that go better than all the other people that are just randomly commenting on your stuff. If they click on your lead magnet, now you have a targeted person. You can send an email. And because I keep my emails list tight, um, I actually respond. I have a five day email process, uh, a five day, five sequence email set up. But within that time span, I'm, I'm emailing them back. And the CRM lets me know every three days, I try to say, have you been able to go over this or whatever? But the email automations, if I get busy and I can still stay relevant in people's minds, because if you meet somebody at an event, you get their email address and don't do nothing with it, or they never see you again, they could have been a perfect person to buy, or maybe they even went to your website and abandoned cards because they were busy. And a lot of people don't abandon buying things because they don't want it. I mean, I just forgot. I was in the middle of doing something. My daughter called or whatever, and then it wasn't that important. But imagine if it was important to me at the time, an email process, hey, you must have forgot. Did you forget? So all those automations would be set up in the background. So that's kind of how you would take people from Facebook to a process where at least take them through a nurturing kind of thing on your Facebook to deliver in your email address. And now you can custom in the background, talk to them and bring them closer to a sale. So um, my 
My question is, is uh, for the lead magnet, is that a continual basis that you yeah. are always updating yeah. your bio? No, okay. no, 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 you don't, okay. no, no, you pick your best lead magnet, right. but I, um, the question I thought you were asking, and I should have let you finish, I'm sorry about that, no but um, what I thought you were asking is, lead magnets are things that are, it, you shouldn't put a whole lot of time because the market is finicky, you just throw stuff out there, <laughs> see what, see what hits, because okay. of people's response or lack of response, you don't want to put a lot of time into making lead magnets, and it's not what the message that the market is looking for. You can tweak a lead magnet and turn it from, uh, turn your Facebook followers into sales headline. Um, or I could take it for a realtor. Hey, realtors, are your Facebook followers, uh, are you looking to get more leads for your business from Facebook? You could change a headline and target it towards realtors. All of a sudden, you got a bunch of targeted realtors. Now, they're all going for the same thing. They all need leads but you can do your targeting and your message and you can change sales and the, it, the outcome of whether you get a sale just by your headline and who you target when you talk to people. And it's just like when you communicate with people face to face, you need to communicate online. These are people, even if there's hundreds of people that are going to your website, there's still people that were interested. You gotta treat them like they are, if you, you would never take a customer that comes into a store, if it's your store, and let them come and browse around, not try to help them, not try to show them nothing. Then they look to buy and you're over here paying attention to this, you're not paying attention to them. You wouldn't do a customer like that. Or if they asked you at an event for your contact information, you give them your contact information and then don't follow up with them. Mm -hmm. So what this does is a good QR code, they scan it, it goes into a data a CRM and the email process goes afterwards. That way you're not missing leads, you're not missing money, and most people will not buy on the first interaction. That assures you that you can get back with them. You got a five day process to give you some leeway to get back with them. I spread mine out by two days, so it's actually a 10 day. There's five emails, but over a 10 day process. So it's the first one, who I am. Hey, I'm Renee, I do this. Uh, what do I do? Uh, or that's, I'm Renee and what do I do? How do I do it? So there, we'll be going over the email process. But right now, we all understand what a lead magnet is, right? Okay, we're gonna go over how to make a lead magnet. Like I said, you're gonna throw tons of different angles into the market on Facebook. Facebook is huge, tons of customers, and it's not just locally. I got people way in Pakistan, I don't even know. But I don't know why I got an audience that buys from me in Pakistan, that's really weird, but they do. Um, but it's really about the message. If, they're, if you, your message is talking about what they need, there's no way you can't sell them if you're good at what you do. So, first of all, do you, uh, everybody, on question number one, I want you to just write two or three different kinds of descriptions of your target audience. Everybody got a pencil pen? And then after you guys write down a couple of ideas of who your target audience is, I want a couple people just to tell me what they put. Who do you have? Well, I've got six more. Mm -hmm. Not describing a person, what I, what I do. Say luxurious stuff, you know. Okay. Who are you selling it to? Who would buy your paparazzi? Is that what you said? No. They sent it to the same table. She was sitting there. <laughs> uh, so, so who, the what kind region. of people would you sell that to? Uh, di it can be for um, diabetics, because I do specialized pedicure. Mm -hmm. Diabetics. Okay. Um, I don't know how to describe people that would have a concern. Yeah. Diabetics. Let's just stop there. Okay. okay. First of all, just a message for everybody in marketing: the more you niche down, the more money you're going to make. You can't sell to everybody. Facebook, first of all, will cost you millions of dollars to do it, and all the time in the world, and you don't have time or money like that to be messing with Facebook like that. So. Um, the more you niche down, she was talking about people who need pedicures or people, but they don't even know they need it, so you got to inform them. But let's say you say, I help people with diabetic neuropathy, with, or with feet care, change the headline, make it target to them. You'll get more sales using that and going into diabetic groups 
and providing value to them about what you do and then they click on your page now you got them on your in your yard your home and now you can sell them and talk to them and do anything you want to because they're not in somebody else but they'll come back to you you provide value in their group in other people's groups and keep in mind the ecosystem of facebook wants that they want the social networking so they want you to go even me as a group owner i want people to be in my group who contribute to the questions and so when you build a community like that uh and then you're going in to provide that value it's an ecosystem it works for everybody you provide the value they click back on your link now you got them in your ecosystem and that ecosystem is still there you just got to be better on your ecosystem and sell them than the other person is. and i look around a lot of facebook okay <laughs> I was like, is that all they're doing? Okay, well, let me just sift some of these people over here. And, it, and it's not a bad thing. It's just knowing what my target audience is, yeah. looking for the things, the pain points, the questions they're asking, or the things that are bothering you. Uh, a, a diabetic group would be perfect for what you're doing. Target your message to them. You'll get sales like candy because it's better than saying, who needs a pedicure? Yeah. You know, because that target audience, and then the target audience is what makes you bigger. Yeah. You don't get, you don't start big and go small. You start small because the ecosystem will open the reach out for you because Facebook automatically sends you traffic, which is leads and customers. If you are producing content, that gets a lot of engagement. That's how the algorithm works. Yeah. The algorithm can't think, it's just triggered. So you put a post out that gets a lot of engagement, Facebook likes that, they want to keep people on the platform. So you figure out how to make good engagement, ask good questions in your group, and your posts are really high, uh, you're getting a lot of engagement, Facebook will automatically boost your post up without any ads. That's called organic marketing, it doesn't cost you anything, it's got no idea. So we got some tar uh, target audience. Um, so now that we know who your target audience is in order to create a lead magnet, um, that's after you create the new ad. Okay. okay. Oh, we're down here. I'm wondering. Okay, we got your target audience. Where is your target audience online and offline? Now, that question there, I want you guys to write down just a, if you don't know a specific Facebook group name. What I want you to write down is any networking that you guys do in the city. Where do you, obviously if you're going, packing your car up and going to networking or workshop, your target audience is there, even if it's somebody else's workshop. So what I want you to do is just write two or three places, Facebook group, mainly online, but it can be offline too, where a large group of your target audience is. Those people that you named, your diabetic people or Whoever you put down as your target audience. A Facebook group, and then if you don't know a Facebook, you don't have your phone or anything, and don't know any off the top, you can go home and search Facebook groups, put uh, a diabetic foot care in the search box, and it'll pull up all the Facebook groups that talk about that. That's how you would find the groups that have your target audience. So you put some keywords in Facebook, not in Google, because obviously it's not on Facebook. You want those people in the group. Now the tabs will also come up if you put those keywords like diabetic neuropathy, foot care. You put those keywords in, it'll have a thing that says post, uh, a list of different things you can filter it down by. You want to filter it down by groups. And then when it pulls up all the Facebook groups versus all the posts and all the other noise, you'll be able to see and then you can look at the groups that have the most people in them, not just the most people, because then you want to open and look in the group and make sure that there's a lot of engagement. Because if you're not, if the group doesn't have engagement, there's no reason for you to be there. Mm -hmm. So you want to look for not just Facebook groups with a lot of people. There's a lot of groups out there with people in them and no engagement and been a post in weeks. There's no way in the world you can learn anything or provide any value to a Facebook group where the last post was a week ago. There's nobody in the group. And if there are thousands of people in the group, they're not engaging. It does you no good to be there. They're not going to engage with you. They're not engaging with the owner of the group. So be careful when you pick your group. So um, pop up. Let's talk about anybody want to tell me a couple places where you see your target audience congregated. You said pop ups. I know that. I'm yeah. out here advising yeah. all the time. 
That's where all your target audience is. And our target plus size. Women. So plus you women. would go into Facebook mm -hmm. under the search bar, type in plus size women clothing, dresses, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Niche it down as much as you can. Black. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I want all races, colors, creeds. Yeah, I understand that, but if you niche it, I'm just saying uh -huh. niching down couldn't see, uh, like Tina, black women uh -huh. over 50. Hers is niched down so good, that's why she's so good at what she does. Uh -huh. She's speaking, it's easier to speak to a group of people that you relate with, mm -hmm. then this target audience is huge, mm -hmm. and you don't have any ends to get in. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just all the noise with everybody else out there. So you want it, the more you can niche down, the better off. So when you put in that search and you're looking for group, then hit it, the tab that says groups. Look at those groups, they'll have tons of them pop up. Mm -hmm. Uh, under your niche market, look, in the, look at the group, open it up, look at when the last post is, and more than anything, if, if they give you access right away, look at the engagement more than anything. If there's no engagements, you don't need to be there. If people are putting posts and it's just selling stuff, you don't have no business there because you won't get through the noise. And actually, those groups that are just like everybody throwing their stuff in there, nobody really sells anything in those groups. So you got it. it's a message that you have to give and reel your people in through relationship marketing. At least that's what's worked for me. Let me see what you got here. So tell me in in the room here, where would some of your target audience be? What kind of events or things would you see your target audience in? So Christmas bridal shows, Okay. And that's exactly, you hear that? That's how you would do it. Uh, it's, it. Offline is the same as online, because just like offline, when you're a networking, those are people, they got those same kind of things on Facebook. You know all the face, I'm sure every one of you guys is in somebody's Facebook group that you talk to on a regular basis and you interact and build your own and start really, and it doesn't happen quickly. But if you have the strategies, it can happen a lot quicker than you realize. And you don't need but a couple people in there, just a couple hundred people in there to sell them, as long as you're providing value and nurturing those couple hundred people. Pop up yeah. Facebook group. So does everybody understand the second question that you need to find out where your target audience is hanging out so that you can provide the value that gets them to you. That one-on-one -on -one selling is awesome, but you will never be able to scale anything that you, the only way you can make money is face-to-face. -face. You have to talk to the masses in a manner that can reel them in. And uh, if you want to make a whole lot of money, I mean, online, you could be like uh, 10 grand a month in no time, but you just have to do the strategy. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have an audience, but you have to have a strategy to build an audience. But you do need an audience. <laughs> Somebody that is regularly responding to you that you've nurtured and, and the best way to nurture a bunch of people is in a Facebook group. Okay, third question. What bait are you going to use to attract your target audience? Now, bait is just what is the thing, the value doc, the lead magnet, the seven tips to seven tips to foot care or uh, my daughter in law does paparazzi. Um, a lead magnet for you could be just a, a, a video of you demoing uh, different, anything to get their attention, basically. And then really, you know, it's got to be something that people will be willing to exchange your email address for, too. So it's kind of a think it through kind of thing, but um, the tactics and uh, the clickable links will sh give you ideas on how to create a lead magnet for your market. But for today, we are going to just kind of in general, if you were to think about something you could give to your target audience, it's just, let's just say a seven tip or three tip, just write out something that could, you could be used, that you could use to attract people who would buy your stuff. Just some ideas. Um, also, too, there's some clickable links. One of the links actually has some examples of a lead magnet. Lead magnets could be checklists. Um, uh, you could actually make a PDF of just seven tips and then put paragraphs under those tips that explain those tips again. 
in more detail, and that could be a lead magnet. Anything that your target audience would find valuable to them, and it doesn't mean value just money. Valuable in that they can benefit from it. And I'm sure in the wedding business, tons of different ideas you guys can come up with. Um, after you create a lead magnet, and keep in mind, you're gonna be creating a lot of them, just throwing, that's why I say don't put too much time into it, because you're trying all kinds of different angles and hooks and wordings and things, the seven tips, maybe that tip didn't work, and maybe they weren't really hitting on that one, but you'll throw a lot out there, and then you'll see one that gets tons of engagement. You know to run with that one, figure out some kind of way to re-spin that, make a video on it, do, do uh, video marketing is real big right now, you just take your iPhone, say, hey, did you get those seven tips on blah, 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 you know, so there's all kinds of quick ways that don't require you to have, like, equipment. You just, you just got to be active in your social media, at least to the point where they, they know when they hit your page that you run a business and that you have an active process on your page to bring them through a customer journey. Okay, let's see. Um, CRMs, just so you know, a CRM is a customer relation management. Realtors use them a lot. But a, a, a CRM actually... Uh, I use clothes right now, uh, active campaign and MailChimp for free. And the reason I mention these is because once you have the lead magnet in exchange for the email address, um, those emails will be put into the CRM, which will automate all the email process afterwards because you don't want to be manually typing emails. Though I did do that when I first started because I wanted to know what messages made people move. So I didn't want canned messages. Um, with, it, with this will come the templates too, you just plug and play, put your business information in, just to get something started. And then you can fine tune it later, so having some kind of email process when you go out in public at events and you're collecting email, having something go to them a little bit afterwards, an hour after you meet them, automatically it's triggered. Having something go out to them is better than having nothing. Because now you go out to sale and you have no way to contact them. You have no idea how to contact it. Keeping an email list, that is a gold mine for any business. Um, when Facebook bought Instagram, they had, Facebook has always had the technology to do what Instagram does. The reason they bought Instagram is because of email list, the contact list. Mm. Your business is the only tangible asset that matters is your email list because Facebook could shut down tomorrow and now you don't have nobody. What do you do? You've depended on these thousands a month you're getting from Facebook, now it's gone. You should always go out of your way to collect any email address of anybody that's potential customer, because even if you don't use the email list right now, to have them, Facebook could shut down like one time last year, it just went out. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the middle of like a lot of money deals right there. I'm like, oh dude, but because I have their contact information, they're just not on Facebook, I have strategically got it from the minute they start talking to me. If they put a comment, I'm on them with, hey, let me give you this lead magnet so, you know, this is something. I'll, they'll ask a question, and I say I got it. And I'll even literally, if it's an easy question, I'll go Google something, go into chat GPT, make a value document real quick, and send it back to them just to show them, hey, I can help you with that too, and then give it to them in exchange for their email address. And that way you're getting the people off of Facebook because the, the business asset that matters is the email list. You said you have a big email list. I know I've talked to a couple people, Darlene, you guys have email lists. And it, even if you're not doing anything or haven't been doing any, you could throw all that into a, that whole list into a CRM and do a re-engagement campaign. You don't have to talk about why you didn't talk to them the first time. And you say, hey, I got some great things coming and talk about moving forward. So uh, the low-hanging fruit is your email list. If you already have a business and you got emails on it, you, I mean, from your business, you need to be hitting them. That's where your money's at. Re-engage them. Tell them, hey, I'm here. You know, I've had some great things happen and never apologize for not contacting them. Don't apologize. Just talk about moving forward and move them towards the process. Hey, I've really got some things going with my business and I really would like to show you what I can do. Send them out the five sequence the warm we call it the warm-up sequence let them click on a few links and get to know you and then now you got a warm list and it's low-hanging fruit and you could see by asking call to asking questions tell me what your biggest issue is with any email with finding a home 
So uh, when you follow up with them, now you're getting from your own email list, people who, whatever reason, last year or you dropped the ball or something and didn't follow up, now you're from your own, without even having to go to Facebook, these are people you already have. So you should always try to sell your low hanging fruit first. And then anywhere you go, always collect email addresses. Facebook shut down tomorrow. Facebook blocks me out all the time. For whatever weird reason, if you make too much money from Facebook without paying for ads, they always got this thing, uh, your password's been locked and yeah. locked you out <laughs> your account. I'm like, I've got money right here, please let me back. I've literally like cried because I had to shut down complete accounts because I need something now. So to avoid that, and I learned the email lesson quickly and fast when I first started. Because I'm just like getting all this money, I'm like, but I'm not collecting emails, I'm not understanding the value of having, and then Facebook shut that account down. I was doing way too much. Probably was. <laughs> Probably made people mad. <laughs> so um, that is why it is so important to uh, collect an email list whether you're doing anything or not with it. You should be doing something with it if you're in business and you know now that your email list, the money's in the follow-up, not on that first interaction. I make 70, 80% of my income, which is right, 12 grand a month from the Facebook, um, just on the email process on the back because most people don't buy off the front. So it's all that follow-up email. Hey, where you been like you and you, you know, the, the fast action one-on-ones. That's a lead magnet, by the way, my fast action one-on-one, this class. Just so you guys can see what different lead magnets are not just um, paper or given exchange of an item. This class is actually my lead magnet, one of my lead magnets. I have the fast action one-on-one and more targeted lead magnets. But this class is pretty much, I live what I do. It's going to be a process. You'll get, you'll submit your email for the scan, the uh, clickable workbook, and I got your email address. You'll get a five-day or someday series on who I am, what I do, how I do it, and it'll ask you what are your needs. There'll be some emails sprinkled in there. What is it you're looking for? Talk about your business. When I see people engage more, because I see everything that comes through the CRM, I see all the emails back and forth. I see when you click on them, if you click on them. So it'll send an automatic thing if you don't click on the email to remind you, because you know, email accounts get, if they people don't regularly go, they get filled. So you set up automation to trigger three days, they don't open the email. So it's all so that when they come to me and they're either getting the self help, the do it yourself course, or they're coming to a workshop, I have a three hour workshop where all of this stuff, I will help you do so that you will leave here with this process in place. That's a three hour workshop so that when you submit your email address, all that information will come to you for you have an opportunity to go further with me. So that's the process and that's a process you would set up according to what your business is. And the three hour class will help you to put this framework and have everything, your Facebook profile, have the lead gen, the content for 30 days will be created and we'll have it scheduled in there and you'll walk out of here with at least the machine to generate leads. Now you gotta go in there and respond to the comments and do your part, but you at least have the machine to go ahead and have everything done. And then you just throw your business and your content in the middle of it. When Which, is um, actually when you get the funnel, um, it's only five to 10 people per class because my classes get filled and it's too many people when I'm trying to help everybody do the steps. Um, it will be in the funnel. The next one will be according to when the next five to 10 people sign up. But that will be in the sales funnel that'll come when you scan your QR code. All those options will be in there. And then just to throw this in, I do have a done for you program. It's an agency service program that does the email marketing, just a la carte kind of stuff. If you just want to email, you want to get your list back going or whatever you want to do, the low hanging fruit. So there's all kinds of different agency service or done for you service. Well, you give me some information, I have a questionnaire and I'll just do all the stuff for you. So that's a done for you service. Um, let's see what we're doing next. What's the time? What's the time, somebody? Two Okay, good, we're great on time. So does everybody understand that when people go to Facebook, they're clicking on your link, you want to have something on your Facebook page and in your Facebook content that you're posting 
that gets them to submit their email address as quickly as you can get them to. When you see that it's somebody of value could be, a, could be in need of your products or services. You wanna get them on an email list. Get them off Facebook. That way you have the ability to follow up with them. And even if you tell people, click on my website link, your website link should always be straight to the contact us page so that it can get their email address first. And then they, they'll go through your website. See, people are always having to go to their sales page, but if you don't have a sales funnel, that's people have to click to find your contact, and most people will bounce. They don't want to go through it. Have your links set up directly to your contact us page if you have a website. That way they're submitting the email address, and no matter what, whether they buy or not, you can follow up with them. I always collect email addresses. Okay, good story author. We're going to talk about content. When you're putting your content on Facebook, a post, just putting a post up there, you should always, I see, I looked at a few of your guys' pages. Most of you don't even have a, a posting with intent kind of posting. You're not posting with any intent, you're just posting. And I understand that because most people don't know that there should be, if you're in business, a strategy to posting. So the strategy is, uh, everybody turn the page. We're going to hook story offer. Every post should have a title, headline. So seven best tips to soft feet. Um, then you put some content, maybe you put three or four of the steps and some words. That's the story or the words that you put in between. The hook is just the, the title that's going to get them to, to read your post. Um, most people just post a post, but they don't have nothing to like, you gotta put a title that's separated from the post. Like title, space, then your words, your post or whatever words are. The title is what you use to attract, to stop people from the scroll. You know, people are doing this all day. So you gotta have a headline that stops them from scrolling for them to even read your post. So, should always have the hook. That's the hook that gets them to stop scrolling. It's called the scroll stopping hook. So when you get them to stop scrolling, that's the only agenda of the hook or the headline of your post is just to stop them from scrolling. Then your words have to be good enough to keep them engaged. It's only like two or three sentences. The post shouldn't be that long. Two or three sentences, that's your story. You should always end the post with a call to action. Click the comments below to get the link to my website. Never put an active link in your post because Facebook pushes your reach down whenever you put a link in your post because Facebook's agenda is to keep people on the platform. If you put a link in your post, they won't promote it, they won't push it, they'll actually push it down in the feed so more people can't see it just because you're taking them off the platform. Always use a call to action or the offer uh, at the end of your post. So it should be actually three different parts to a post. One should be the headline, then your words to keep them reading, and then something to say, click the thing in the, po in the comments to do this, to, uh, or it, can, it doesn't even have to, do, have to be sending them somewhere. Say, what are your, uh, ask them something that makes them engage. So you want to hook story offer framework whenever you write every post from now on. Every post from now on. Always make sure there's a headline. Even if you write the words first, go back up and put a headline in and put a call to action for them to do something. When uh, Facebook recognizes that your posts get a lot of activity, they'll start giving you free promotion. So you want to ask engaging questions that will make people want to answer uh, about your business or what you do to get, and also to target the people that you can work with. So. Hold I gotta hear something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, so, let's start off, let's go with, what, let's, everybody, let's say you're making a post for your target audience. What is a headline you can use for one single post? Don't get off, like you gotta think about it real hard. Pick a post, I mean, pick a uh, headline that you can write for a post that you may be thinking about. Gotta sit down. 
lot of information, Renee. You feel way the girl. Yeah, I'm handling it, man. <laughs> so, um, anybody got an idea of a hook? Seven tips to avoiding the awkward sway. That's a good one. Say that again. Seven tips to avoiding the awkward sway. What's awkward? Oh, the dance. Yeah. <laughs> awkward sway. Oh, here we go. Oh, okay, so that's 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 the awkward oh. <laughs> So seven tips. So and then he would put some content in between that speaks about those seven tips. And then he would put an offer, click the link in the comments, either to call or to maybe go to a lead magnet. You also can put your lead magnet when you say click to the website or whatever you can use that space to also promote your lead magnet when people answer the questions that you put in your post. All right, let me see what's next on here. Story. Well, we understand what the story is, but the story is basically, what are you gonna say to support your hook? And the call to action is what are you gonna tell them to do? That's what the call to action is. Again, all those blue links are clickable, so they'll go to the next page. They'll go to the next uh, tactics link that'll show you the steps to do that. And the last part of the process is the email follow-up. Uh, it's the last page. The email follow-up is when they submit their email address. It's uh, in the CRM, and by the way, the CRMs I suggested are free up to 100 contacts or something like that, but it's free. So you can, every, all of this is stuff you can do for free. Um, so uh, the first email that you would, you would do all this beforehand um, and put in the CRM so it's pre-done, and then you set triggers, like every two days, send email one, send email two, send email three. And it'll send, a, uh, I usually do it for a 10 day process, that way it gives me time to kind of get to know what they're talking about. Each of these emails also does hook story offer. So the first one, what you do, but it also has a hook, which is in the email is a subject line. The story is whatever words you're using. And the offer is, uh, tell me what your biggest struggle is with your business. And hit the reply button to tell me or whatever that is. So um, you would use that same hook story offer framework for any content you build. Even your lead magnet. Your lead magnet is going to have a hook, the title of the lead magnet. It's going to have the words in it. And at the end, you should put something that leads them to the next step in your process. Um, so the email process is what you do, how you do it, who you do it for, and how you can do it for them. Some formulation of that. Now, did you say you did five days or six days of the email process? My my warm ups and that's just the warm up sequence it is a five email process, but I do it over ten days because I trigger it every other day. Because most people don't look at their email every day, and I want to try. And most of the time, they will probably only see one of the emails. That's why you want to make sure that each of those emails has a call to action, because most people won't see all five of those emails. You want to make sure each of them always has something they can do next. And whatever the next thing you want them to do, whether it's to pick up the phone, to call you, to leave a comment, reply, go to Facebook. You can even lead them to go to your Facebook group so they can make a comment on Facebook and raise your engagement, make the whole ecosystem work for each other. Yeah. Tell them, hit my Facebook, put your link in your Facebook, and tell them, go on here and put a comment or something like that just to make the ecosystem work together. Um, the email processing would happen once you set the emails up and all those links that are in there have the template for the email. You just plug and put your stuff in. You can cuss, change the words around, but it's something if you don't know what to say just to use and then just put your business name and what you do in there. So it's kind of the format with the call to action and everything. You just change it to fit so you're not looking at a blank screen when you try to type up emails. Then you just take, you cut and paste them and put those emails in the CRM, trigger them a day and a half after each other. Now you got a 10 day process for you to check your email, see in who's responding, and maybe somebody has asked a real 
by your question, now you can follow up with them on a more personal level than just the automated process. And you should always follow up with them in between that 10 day process, do a personal email. Don't just let the process, it, it works on its own, but not by itself. You gotta keep, you have to re-engage. It's about building a relationship and the automation can't build that relationship. So you gotta get in there at some point and do that yourself. Uh, um, the closed action campaign in the mail, is that used just to collect the emails or to also send them? Yeah. It, it, um, you would collect them. Well, that the collection would come from the lead magnet right. and a lead funnel. The tactics that uh, come up in the workbook will show you how to make a lead funnel for free. And you just use a Google Doc, I mean Google Form that collects their email address. You just Everybody has a Google Doc, know how to use Google Drive and Docs and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you would just set up a Google form that collects their email address, use that as a link, and then when they uh, put their email address in, then you can, have it, you can have it automatically go over to the CRM and it'll trigger out there. So everything is connected, you just have to connect them. And uh, I think the tactics will show you the steps to do it. Yeah. <laughs> You say yes. Don't say you want to take a five minute break. Yeah, let's take a break. Yeah, let's take a little break. Yeah, everybody, can we take a break? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're helping me. You're helping yes, me so much. I got you, girl. That's what we do. I'm like, I'm gonna die. That's a lot of information pouring into us. Yes.